Hey guys, it's Miss Arlequin, and in this video, we're going to be learning our new vocabulary words from Flowers for Algernon for progress reports 11 through 14. All right, so as always, it's time to rate your prior knowledge of our new vocabulary words. Remember one, never seen or heard the word before, going all the way up to four, where you are an expert on the word, you know it, you can use it, you can teach it to other people, you know the whole word family. All right, so our first word is lethargic. Second is affront. Third is paradoxically. Fourth is patronize. Fifth is usurp. And the sixth is vacuous. All right, so let's start off with lethargic. When you feel lethargic, you're sluggish or you lack energy. Being sleepy or hungry can make anyone lethargic. Being lethargic makes it hard to get anything done. You feel weak and sleepy. Whatever the reason, a lethargic person needs to snap out of it, get some energy, maybe by eating something, something with a little sugar, or taking a nap. And if you're an adult, you're probably going to use coffee most of the time to snap yourself out of it. Being lethargic also goes well with watching TV since that takes almost no energy at all. And when you feel lethargic, you don't have any energy to spare. During the hottest days of summer, I feel so lethargic that all I want to do is drink iced tea and paint. So again, really think about how lethargic should go with any context where you're tired, you lack energy, and even if you lack an interest in doing something, like you feel inactive and lazy, that could be a good context for describing yourself as lethargic. All right, next word is affront. An affront is an action that causes offense. So if someone blows smoke in your face after you've asked him to put out a cigarette, you would consider it an affront. So when we use the word affront, we're always going to use it as a noun. We're gonna talk about it as if it is an affront. So you might say something like, it was an affront or it is an affront, and then describe what the action was that insulted someone or offended somebody. Before the judge sentenced the teenage killer, he told him his heinous actions were an affront to all civilized people. They were an insult. That's actually another really great way to think about how to use this word. Come up with a sentence where you describe something as an insult or you describe it as an offense. And then instead of using those two words in the sentence, just replace it with a front. So it was an offense, take offense out of it. It was an affront to somebody. All right, our next word is paradox or paradoxically. Here's a mind bender. This statement is false. If you think that that statement is true, then it must be false. But if you think it's false, then it must be true. That's exactly what a para paradox is. So a paradox is basically, in other words, a logical puzzler that contradicts itself in a baffling way. Like when Pinocchio says, my nose will grow now. If he's lying, his nose is going to grow. But if his nose grows, then that means he wasn't lying. So they can't both happen. If one of them happens, it contradicts itself. So paradoxically is the adverb form of paradox. Paradox is the noun. It's something, usually a situation, that is made up of two opposite things that seem impossible, but it's actually true or possible. So when it happens, you go, wow, that shouldn't be able to happen. It's a paradox. Because Jack is madly in love with Jill, he believes her flaws cause her to be paradoxically perfect. Her flaws should make her not perfect, but for him, they make her perfect. Paradox. All right, our next word is patronize. If someone patronizes you, it's not pleasant. They're basically talking to you as if you were inferior or not very intelligent. So they're talking down to you. That's the more colloquial way of talking about patronizing, talking down to somebody. So patronize comes from the Latin patronus, not the Harry Potter patronus. In Latin, it means protector or master, and it is also related to the word pater, which means father. So if you patronize a person, you're talking down to them like a father might do to his child or a master might do to his apprentice. Now, in that case, it's not necessarily negative because 
you're talking down to somebody who doesn't have the knowledge you do. So you're teaching them in a way. But patronize does have a negative connotation. It has evolved to not be something you really want to do to people. If you want to take an advanced class and your advisor warns you of all the hard work, you can tell them to stop patronizing you. You know a hard class involves hard work. This sounds much better than saying I'm not stupid. So again, when you patronize, you talk down to someone, you're kind of implying that you're more intelligent or you're better than them and they don't really know what you know. He hated being patronized and pitied by those who didn't believe his story. Or, I'm sure you did your best even though you failed. Please don't patronize me. All right, our next word is usurp. If you take over your neighbor's backyard and you claim his in-ground swimming pool is your own, you might seize control of or usurp his yard, but he'll probably call the cops on you. So by taking control, taking their property, making it yours, you're putting yourself in an authority over somebody else's stuff or over them, then you are usurping them. You're seizing control. Leaders who usurp power don't ask for permission to take control of their country. They seize the power, often with the help of a large army of followers. So this is really a political word. You use it to describe kings and queens in historical settings. Anytime somebody rebels and tries to take over for themselves, they're trying to usurp the power, usurp the country, usurp the kingdom. A usurper doesn't have to be human. A brand new radio station can usurp the most popular station in town by playing a better mix of music. So you can use it in different contexts to describe anything that takes over from someone else. After the king dies, his brother will usurp the throne from the prince. He will take it over. Now just keep in mind that usurp usually has a connotation of being forceful or violent. Um, and it's especially being done when it isn't your right to do so. You're taking something that doesn't belong to you when you usurp it and then it becomes yours. All right, and our final word is vacuous. It's an adjective and you would use it to describe usually someone who's harmlessly stupid and truly meaningless. Vacuous is a way smarter sounding uh, way to describe something dumb. So it has a little bit of a more positive connotation, but that's stretching it to say that it's positive. If you're calling somebody vacuous, it is an insult. Celebrity gossip and reality TV are usually pretty vacuous, even if they're fun. They're harmlessly stupid. If someone smiles at you in a way that seems fake or empty, you could describe the smile as vacuous. You could describe somebody's thoughts as being vacuous. You could describe their actions as being vacuous. An example of a vacuous comment would be if a politician um, promises to make something better, but they don't really explain how. So they're just making these grand statements without any facts, without any details, without proving it. If something is vacuous, it's like a vacuum. It's hollow, it's empty, it's devoid of any true substance. So bored with the vacuous chatter at the party, Mitchell went home and read a book. So think of vacuous or think of sentences where you want to describe something as being very empty, very dumb, and then use, instead of using the word empty or dumb, use the word vacuous to describe it. But when we say empty, we're saying empty of thought or meaning. You can't apply this to just anything that's empty. Like a garbage pail could be empty, but you're not going to describe the garbage pail as being vacuous. All right, so now it's time to write your own example sentences. We know how this goes, context clues, five W's, extra credit if you write two sentences, bonus points if you use any previous vocabulary words as well, and bring your sentences to class tomorrow.